Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and if this is your first time here, welcome to Booked and Busy. So today I am here to do my best books of 2020. I have put this video off for a while, literally weeks, because it's been almost a month since anything changed on this list because I just could not bring myself to talk about it yet because I just know I'm going to get so emotional because these books mean so much to me. So if you're interested in uh, seeing what my favorite books of the year were, keep on watching. But before we keep going, I want you to leave a comment and tell me what you think my number one book of the year will be. I'm excited to see if you are correct. So just stop, pause the video, leave that comment, and then let's get started. So we're going to number 10. There are five honorable mentions, but honestly, I think I might just make a, a, a separate video for like, you know, books that almost made it. Um, but at number 10, we have The Sword of Kai Gan by Emma Wan. This is the only book that has been added to this list in recent times. And this book, whoa, it moved me. If you've been around for any length of time for the last month or two, you would have heard me talk about this. You may have seen me cry and sob and just be destroyed by this book. The Sword of Kai Gan, it's a Theonite war story. This is the prequel and a standalone fantasy novel to the, the Theonite series by M.L. Wong. This is a self-published fantasy. And it is an Asian-inspired world where we have uh, a mom, Masaki, and a son, Mamoru. And this mom was a, she was raised as a fighter and a soldier, but to become a wife and a mother, she had to put down her sword. And uh, war is coming to their island, and uh, or the peninsula, and she may have to pick it up again. And we follow her son, who is going to be the scion or the 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 newest rising star of this family. And in this, he has to. Y'all, the way I forgot my number 10 book already, this is number 9. Okay, let me put this down, and I'm going to come back to this one and tell you about number 9. Because number nine is number 10 is the one I don't have the physical copy of. So, my number 10 best book of the year is The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. This is a non-fiction book. The only one of this list that I do not own, and the only non-fiction on this list, The Devil in the White City is a story by Eric Larson. It's told in two parts, and we follow um, uh, the architects behind the Chicago's World's Fair and we follow H.H. Uh, Holmes of his rise to fame I guess as a serial killer his rise to infamy and this takes place in 18 I think 1800s 1850s 1860s Chicago I'm a little loose on the details I read this back in May but this is the single best non-fiction book I think I've ever read it reads like fiction it's so engaging I learned so many things about like, American history about serial killers it inspired a, an interest in true crime for me and the way that I know this book was fantastic is because I don't have an interest in architecture or landscaping or anything like that I don't have an interest in true crime and serial killers all that but putting these two together and the way that Eric Larson wove this story together it was so interesting it was so engaging I'm so excited to dive more into his other works this year it was literally fantastic if you are looking for a non-fiction recommendation I highly recommend The Devil in the White City and I specifically recommend the audiobook back to number nine um sort of got yeah I told you I'm so nervous to film this video like ugh. the sort of guy again um is so emotional this I have read some amazing books, but this has the single best action scene I have ever read. This book, like, ripped me apart. It shredded me. Like, there's this one line that everyone who's read this book, we all, we just say it to each other sometimes just to make each other cry. And it's just like, what the world wouldn't know is that he would be the second youngest. And, like, I ain't gonna get emotional right now, but. It's so good. I highly recommend this one. If you have not read this, please, please pick it up. Like all these books that I'm talking about are books. Let me put this up here. That I highly recommend that you try because they are fantastic. Number eight, we have The Martian by Andy Weir. This is a standalone sci-fi novel and we follow our main character Mark Watney who is an astronaut but he's also like a botanist and I think a chemical engineer. Those are like his two roles and they are on a mission to Mars, Aries 5 I think or Aries 3, one of those and they are doing this mission and then there's a sandstorm that happens and his uh, team leaves him because they think he's dead and then it comes to find out he is alive and they are trying to figure out uh, how he's going to survive on Mars for as long as it takes for them to get a rescue mission to him or to the next Ares mission and also how to communicate with Earth and let them know that he is still alive. This is a story about isolation and survival and thinking outside the box and taking risks and 
questioning your own sanity and how far you're willing to go to survive and this is like i love mark so much this book is so funny it's so it like enjoy but such a patron you just are so engrossed in the world like it's lots of math it's lots of science but none of that deters or detracts from the story it's so good like i watched the movie first and watching the movie i'm like i really want to read the book see the book is is you know the book is usually always better and the book is and the movie are very very similar but knowing what was going to happen did not detract from my reading of this in any single way like, i highly recommend the book and the movie this book and that movie started my journey into sci-fi this year and i have loved my time with sci-fi and i plan to continue on with that but this book is so good it's so fun like and it's not that long and it's not a big part of a huge series so it's an easy commitment if you are looking to get into sci-fi i highly 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 recommend this book because it's just a great place to start um if you like survival stories if you like isolation stories if you like things like that i highly recommend this because mark watney will tug at your heartstrings he'll make you laugh you want to cry you'll be sad for him you will be screaming for joy when he succeeds like you'll be trying to think of math problems and like how to grow things and just like mm, it's so good so good all right um so the next one i want to talk about is number seven and number seven is going to be gideon the knife by tam Demure. this is the first book in the lock tomb series i read this back in january i believe and i just knew from the beginning it was going to be a favorite um this book is it takes place in space it's equal parts sci fantasy it takes place in space and we follow uh gideon who is the cavalier of the ninth house she is a human girl so she doesn't have the power of necromancy but she is conned into being the cavalier of harrow who is the ruling daughter essentially of the ninth house and i won't go into spoilers on that part but they go on this mission to um this island because the the lord emperor basically he is uh, requiring a new crop of gods essentially and people can go to this this trial let's say and they can attempt to ascend to godhood and become lighters themselves and so we follow as gideon and harrow go to this place and then when we get to the island we get to it's like a, almost like a murder mystery and like an isolated story because everyone is in this haunted house and they have to find the keys to ascending to the godhood in the house but they're all competing against one another we have bloodshed we have betrayal it's so queer it's so funny it's this book is like has a really unique writing style and it's very impersonal and gideon is just one of my favorite characters she's so funny and she's so and that her relationship with harrow is like enemies to lovers but not really enemies to lovers more like enemies to friends um with and this book is just so good it's so good people like sometimes give this book a hard time it's just hard to get into but it really is not i think it's just one you have to pick up and accept that you may not understand exactly what's going on and then get into it because once you get to the house the mystery the murder all those things is like really keep the story going and it's such a good time number six this is a book i have a series i have talked about so much i have a very complicated relationship with this series but when i thought about this list there was no way i could leave this off and this one is the hero of ages by brandon sanderson this is the third book in the mistborn trilogy um mistborn is so i'm gonna talk about the first book and i'm gonna come back to the second the third book so mistborn is an adult fantasy series this first book we have a heist and it has this world where um so we're in ellendale and we're on this world where allomantic magic exists and so that's where people can ingest metals and they can use the metals to perform different abilities and in this world a person who can ingest one metal is a missing and the person who can ingest all the metals and use their power is a misborn we follow kelsier and then kelsier who is the survivor has since the lord of the mist he is just that man okay and kelsier uh, is trying to pull out this big heist to overthrow the lord ruler because the story the premise of the story is that what if the, the bad guy won and he's been ruling for a thousand years and we follow Kelsey as he, uh, as he, you know, assembles this like Avengers group of thieves who all have different abilities and who have skill in different areas of thieving or how to pull off this epic heist in efforts to overthrow the Lord Ruler. This story is almost like a standalone because the other two books, while they are connected to this one, this one wraps up pretty well. But let's talk about The Hero of Ages. This is one of the best endings to a series I have ever seen. This follows predominantly one of my favorite characters in the series and that is Sazed. And we get Sazed's backstory. We get so much more about the world this is like honestly one of the most i think single most atmospheric books i have ever read in my life of this series the atmosphere is so rich and so lush i can literally picture the piles of ash i feel like i was there in in this world like 
I, I was transported and the the way that I cared about these characters I was so invested in the things that happened like the conclusion I'm so excited to reread this series because I listened to it audibly the first time which I highly recommend Michael Kramer's narration is fantastic but this ending felt so good like you know how sometimes you you get to the end of the book and like there are things that weren't wrapped up things that you still have questions about things that you didn't enjoy and I wouldn't change a single thing about the way this book ended the climax the peak the way it propelled forward the things that happened like it hurt but it felt good and it felt earned and it was just amazing so I could not leave uh this off the list I did restrict this list to one book per author because I would definitely talk about the Alloy of Law, which is the second book, uh, the first book in the spinoff series. Or I will also talk about Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson, which I uh, loved this year. But um, specifically of all the ones that I read, The Hero of Ages is the most epic conclusion. And it is the book that deserves the spot on this list. So if you have not checked out Brandon Sanderson, if you have not read Miss Bourne, please do because each book is better and better and better. All right, so now we are breaking into the top five. And honestly, if you have watched my videos all year, you can guess with ease. I think the top five, you might have the order mixed up a little bit, but I think the top five itself is easy enough for you to guess. So number five, we have The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. This is book one in the Broken Earth trilogy. And this of this and this these two series are the most atmospheric things I've ever read this is like amazing like I can picture myself in the stillness I can picture the quakes I can picture the obelisk I was just oh, so good so this is the first book in this trilogy and in this world we have um where there are like epic global events of catastrophic nature it's like the apocalypse comes every generation because the earth and Mother Nature and Father Time are upset and they are taking their anger out on the world to end it. So it is welcome to the end of the world. It's kind of how the book starts. And we follow this main character named Heston and at the opening of the book she finds out that her husband has run away with her daughter and has killed her son and so she's on this quest to find out what happened to her son and to find her husband and her daughter. And we also follow this character named Demaya who is a young girl who is coming into her magic, coming into her power, discovering things about herself and traveling to the Fulcrum which is a school for the magical children in this story, in this world. And then we also follow Cyanite who is a young woman who is, who is in her prime mastering her power and now she's been set out on a quest to see what her abilities really can do and so she can move forward in the society and this book that magic is so unique the world is so atmospheric the characters it's like a polyamorous relationship in here the the setting it changes there's a quest involved and this book has the most epic plot twist i have ever read listen thrillers wish they could mysteries wish they could they, they wish they could do it like miss nk jemison because no I did not see this plot twist coming. You could not have paid me a million dollars to tell you that was going to happen. And I still have not been taught. Like, this book was good. I was enjoying it. It was like a four-star read prior to me getting to that part. And then when I got to that part, I was like, are we serious right now? Like, are you joking? I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. Um, she needs the right thrillers too because like that plot twist, the way she pulled it off, ugh. And like there's so much world packed into this small of a book. And this, the series continues to expand and has some of my favorite characters like Hoa. I love Hoa so much. Um, but the magic is so unique in this world. The politics, um, we really, it has a lot to do about the environment. And um, this book is just, it's, people say that it's complicated. And like the second person throws some people off. But it's one that I just say, just sit down and listen to it and read it. And just let yourself be carried away in this world. Because you're going to feel so many things. You're going to be so invested in this world, in this journey. And I highly, highly recommend this one. Also, the audiobooks for these are fantastic. Robin Miles' narration is chef's kiss. It's stupendous. It is without flaw. Okay? Number four. Number four. Jay City by Fonda Lee. This book, these characters, my king, he love. This is book one in the Green Bone Saga. And listen, Fonda Lee did what she had to do. I read this book and I was like 13 pages in. 
and I knew this was going to be a five star read. I knew it was going to be a new favorite. Like that's how intense my love for this was from the beginning. The writing is stupendous. The character work, the, the family dynamics is so good. So Jay City is an urban adult fantasy novel that takes place in an analog of 1970s Hong Kong. And we follow two mafia families who control the bioenergetic jade of this country. And they have immense power and immense political uh political ability in this world they are the rulers they are the government they are the police even though those things exist they are the real authority in Kekon so we follow these this main family that we follow are the Nopi clan and there's the Kaw family and so we follow Lan who is the pillar of the clan who is the leader of the clan now in the new generation with Ohilo who is the horn and he is the muscle of the clan and then we follow Shay who is a strange daughter we also have Anzen baby Anzen who is in school to become training to become a green bond warrior and we follow this character as at the beginning of the story uh, a drug has been introduced that makes people who do not have the natural ability to wear jade and use inspired energetic abilities or capabilities they are now able to do so and this is created by foreign power and we watch as uh, outside factors kind of play into this and we follow the impacts of that decision and the war between the clans because the clans one clan wants to rule over them all and this book the romance is good the magic is good the fighting the action is good the character work is good like seeing these this the intense family dynamic in here and how you have family members who don't like each other or who aren't close and how they come together how they support each other Hilo is one of my favorite characters i have a thing with this type of characters that i like everyone talks about it but like i feel for him so much i understand him so much i love him so much Miss Fonda Lee pulled the, pulled the wool over my eyes from this one too. There's an event that happened in here. I was so shocked. I was like, you really gonna do that in the first book of a series? Okay, George R.R. Martin. Okay, I see you. And the action in this book is so good. The political intrigue is so good. Like, I am so excited for Jade Legacy this year. And this book is just fantastic i have read about jcd enough that i feel like y'all know what it's about i feel like with these books it's even at this point it's just so hard for me to even talk about them because i love them so much it's like what can i even say at this point to tell you all about my love okay so we're getting into the top three and i can truly say the top three are interchangeable they interchangeable depending on the day the mood but in the way that I was able to navigate the top three, because all of them are five stars, all of them are brand books, all of them are fantastic, and they're all series. It was based on the first book in the series, how I felt about the first book. And so that's how we got here. Like, I think, honestly, I wrote them down in different order, but I think I'm just going to change the order again right now. I think I'm going to change number two and number three right now. Okay, so in the number three spot, this is so hard. In the number three spot, we have the Red Rising Trilogy by Pierce Brown. Specifically, we have Morningstar. But because we're going on the first book, and I'm going to talk about the first book, we're going to talk about Red Rising. So, Red Rising is the Hunger Games in space. That's what this book, first book is. It is a story of oppression, of revolution, of infiltration. And we follow our main character, Darrow, who is a red. And in this world, the caste system is divided into colors. Reds are the lowest of the low. They are treated like slaves. They have been uh, mining this natural uh, gas on Mars in hopes that in future generations they will be able to come and make Mars livable. But what they don't know is that people have been living on Mars for generations and they are no better than slaves. So we follow this main character named Darrow who becomes, um, he transforms and he is, he's turned into a goal basically. Okay, I'm just gonna say, that's the whole premise of the book. <laughs> he's turned into a goal and he goes into goal societies to infiltrate them and overthrow them as part of a rebellion and a revolution. And in the first book, we follow him as he goes into like the institute. And this is where like the Hunger Games part comes in. Like this, this, uh, where all the goals come together and they represent different houses and they fight for dominance, for control. It's like a war game. And that's what happens in this first book. And it's so good. Uh, Darrow is so smart. He is so cunning. He is just a character I love to follow. He means so much to me. I love him so much. I think he's the most sane and hinged of all the, my favorite characters but i specifically want to talk about like hit on all of the books because red rising is fantastic it was a four star read it was great but then we get into golden sun golden sun and so all these are like one because specifically i can't tell you like all the things about the third book but i'm just gonna talk about them go this 
first 50% of this book, I felt like I was running a race. Like I was a stallion at like a big horse race and I was just going, 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 going because the first 50% of this book is so fast paced. It's so intense. It is the best 50% of a book I've ever read in my life. It is so good. And then the ending, the ending ripped my heart from my chest. I was not expecting it. It was, it was so amazing. I read this whole series in a week because I was just so into it. And this is the, is the, ooh, the sequel. This is the sequel of sequels, but we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But this is so good. Like, this is such a strong, mm, the I, mm, mm, mm. Fierce Brown can write, okay? He can write some action. He writes in such a way that you're so excited. You are thrilled. You are just like gassed up and you're just reading because you're just having such a good time. Like, I can picture this on the big screen. I can picture this everywhere because it's so moving. Like, the writing is beautiful. I literally would say it's beautiful. Um, I I've, I've, haven't read that much sci-fi. Um, but I've never, it's a very few writers who I've seen who are write things that's so gruesome and so brutal and so violent, but in such a beautiful way. And Pierce Brown has that ability in spades, okay? Golden Sun. But now, Morning Star. <sighs> this book crushed me like a bug, okay? This book is so good. I cried cry cry i cried so many times this book hurt me it did things to me that i don't even want to speak of it hurt so much i i was so invested in these characters so invested in the world one of my favorite things about red rising is not only how how much we love and enjoy daryl how much we know about daryl because it's a single pov trilogy but how much we are invested in the side characters how much we learn about the side characters how much they are fleshed out we have some of the best friend groups we have like the best bromance between daryl and Severo. we have uh strong women on our team we have mustang we have roke we uh, we have um ragnar we have uh aries uh, so many strong side characters who add to the story who make the story more dynamic more engaging and this this is a oh i talked about how hero of ages was an amazing uh finale this was a made an amazing finale. Sometimes the first book in the series is the strongest and they get weaker. In this case, the first book was the weakest and every book got stronger. Each book in this series got better and better and better. And I'm so excited to continue on and read Iron Gold and Dark Age. I had to save some good for 2021 because this was stupendous. This was a work of art. This needs to be in the Louvre. It needs to be in like, a, uh, um, go on a brand tour because this is so good. I cannot express to you the amount of joy and sorrow and just how many emotions this book made me feel i highly recommend it all right so we're getting down to the top two okay top two <sighs> okay so number two specifically is royal assassin by robin hobb which is book two in the far seer trilogy the first book being assassin's apprentice so i'm going to talk about them both because obviously i can't tell you too much about royal assassin so assassin's apprentice is a, uh, Ir Irvin. This is an adult epic fantasy novel and we follow our main character Fitzgerald Farseer who is the bastard son of the king or the crown prince of the six duchies and at age four or five he's abandoned at the keep and he is taken in by his uncle and the man who uh takes care of his father's hounds horses and hogs. His name is Birch and he is taken to the keep back to the palace and when he gets there his father has abdicated the throne and now he's being raised by the stable man well as Fitz grows up he is ignored and he is not shunned because he is still of the royal family but he's also um of low birth because he's an ambassador and his position in this world makes him perfect for the role of an assassin so he is trained as an assassin in this story and we follow him as he goes this is like a coming of age fantasy novel and it's it's so much it has to deal with mental health it has to deal with like family and uh depression and this book like can be so i don't think people talk about it as much as as they should but this book is dark it hurts our main character in just the first 15 years of his life he goes through so much i fitz is like my child so like when we talk about my favorite characters daryl is like my man so he's like my i want him to be my friend okay fitz is like my child like i would fight for fitz i would protect him like this is how i feel, how strongly i feel robin Hobb's writing is slow and lush but it pulls you in so much you you are you don't even realize how he like slithers around you like a snake and before you know he's squeezing you to death with how much you care about these characters so that's the first book 
but my my favorite favorite in the trilogy is royal assassin this book hurt me so much it crushed me like a bug like a juicy roach you just crush and all of my insides just spilled out this book is amazing it picks up immediately off where the first book left off and we follow Fitz as he grows more so from a boy into a man in this book and how his role and how he, he's maturing and the threat that he provides or he is to the royal family and the people who have designs on the throne and things like that. And this book just gets so much deeper into the world. As you can see, like, it's significantly longer. It gets so much deeper into the world. We get so much deeper into Fitz's head. And in this world, there's also, like, this magic where one is, like, a telepathy where only people who have royal blood can do that. And there's also a the magic that's similar. There's, like, a telepathy or a bond with animals. And uh, animal companions is one of my favorite things we get in this book. We have Night Eyes. And Night Eyes is, like, one of my favorite characters ever. And this book just hurt me so much. I feel so deeply, so strongly, so much for Fitz. He... I, I just want to protect him. I don't want anything bad to happen to him. I want to fight and slay the dragons, kill the demons. Anything that wants to harm my child, I want to protect him. This book is so good. This series is so good. Robin Hobb's character work is flawless. You cannot find better character work, better writing than Robin Hobb. She is the standard. She's the gold standard for character work in fantasy. Now, at this point in the game... Y'all know my favorite book of the year is. There's no way I made this book, this list, and then talk about this book, this series. So you all can guess what my favorite is. It is obviously, clearly, without a doubt, The Raid to Dragons by Evan Winter. Oh. So I'm going to talk about both. Um, and we're talking about first books, so how I decided between these. And... I love Fires of Vengeance. It was fantastic. It was a penis, but like this, and the crazy thing is, this is a better book than this. But this book meant so much to me. This book changed my reading life. This book is the first time I saw myself in a fantasy. I saw my struggles, my the the issues that my people have. This is the first time where I 100% didn't have to be the motivations my character had didn't have to be explained to me I understood him I saw myself in Tao I saw myself in this world I saw my experiences on these pages and that's why this book means so much to me so the Rage of Dragons if you have been here since August you have heard me rant and rave and gush about this book and I love it so much Tao again like these other ones are what Tao is one of my favorite characters ever um this book, Rage of Dragons, is a revenge story, okay? And we follow our main character, Tao, who lives in this militaristic society where they have been fighting an unwinnable war for 186 years. And in this society, one in 200 men has the power to go like Super Hulk and be enraged, and one in 2,000 women has the power to call down and entreat with dragons. And we follow Tao, who is a normal boy who wants to marry his girl and get hurt so that he doesn't have to serve as a soldier and be cannon fodder for the endless war. But an event happens and he decides he has to become the biggest, baddest, most vicious killing machine ever to avenge those who have wronged him. We follow his journey, his descent into madness, his single-mindedness, his determination to see justice met out the way that he deems it should be. And it is just so powerful like the discussions in this book about oppression about rage about violence about being driven to madness and to the end and of being lesser and being and not seeing yourself and you not feeling like you are valued in the society that you are a part of this book moved me it like it moved mountains in me and that is even more so true in um the rage the fires of vengeance this is uh, amazing sequel like the Rage of Dragons was good it was great it was fantastic when I read the Fires of Vengeance I was like this book like knocks that one completely out of the park it is so fast paced the action is fantastic there are passages in here that I would literally tattoo on my body because they are so moving they are so powerful the discussions on rage on violence on war all these things that Evan Winter does in this book in this series it is it's just incomparable incomparable i love these books so much i love the rage of dragons so much this book has the most special place in my heart because 
I felt understood. I felt seen. This book is powerful. It is emotional. You you can love Tao or you can hate him, but as to a degree, you have to understand how angry he is and how his anger isn't just a fleeting feeling. It's not something in the moment. He is convicted. He has so much conviction about what he wants to do. There is nothing that can or will deter him. He has his mind set on what he wants to do and what he thinks is right, and he is determined to do whatever is necessary to get that. Come hell or high water, damn whoever gets in his way. Ta is willing to go how go wherever, do wherever to see justice done. And and honestly, what can you say? Like this this book, this book, like Evan Winter, I feel like he wrote this book just for me. I can't even tell you. Like, yeah. So that's it. Like, I'm getting emotional. I love these books so much. This has been such a fantastic reading year. My tastes have changed so much. I've discovered so much about my reading, about myself, about my likes and my dislikes. And I hope you all have enjoyed coming along on this journey with me. Uh, here's to 2021 being a year of amazing reads, of new favorite characters, new stories, new loves. And I will see all of y'all in my next video. If you made it to the end of this video, leave a teardrop emoji before all the crying and the tears that these books inspired in me. And I will see all of y'all in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.